Pond Preparation Brief Intro Various steps for preparing pond are described below. Controlling harmful aquatic plants and animals. Aquatic weeds consumes almost all the nutrition from water. Eradicating cannibalistic and unwanted fish. Applying lime. Applying fertilizer. Before a pond can be restocked for a new crop, the excessive wastes, which accumulate in the pond during the previous crop, must be removed in the soil and water conditioned. Growing of koi fish in an improperly prepared pond may lead to difficulty in pond management during the culture period, which could result in a decrease in production capacity of the pond. The cleaning of a pond or removal of the wastes, especially the organic and phosphatic wastes that have accumulated in the pond bottom could be accomplished by drying, liming and plowing. However, these methods could still leave an adverse effect on the water and soil quality in the pond, which could result in a decrease in the production capacity of the pond. There are two methods for cleaning a pond according to the possibility of the pond. To be dried. Dry method. This method is used when the pond bottom can be dried completely. The pond is drained and left to dry in the sun for a period of 10 to 30 days. Then the waste is removed either manually or mechanically, and transported to the waste dumping area. Removal of waste by machines has an advantage that it can compact the bottom soil. However this cleaning method by drying may lead to development of acidity, lowering the level of the pond bottom and the diffusion of wastes if the workers are inexperienced. Wet method In areas where the pond cannot be dried completely, pressure washing can be used to flush out the wastes. This method takes a shorter time and is more efficient than the dry method. Flushing should be continued until the acid and dark anaerobic layer in the soil are removed. This method is suitable in the acid sulfate areas where the oxidation of the soil must be avoided. However, the method requires a sedimentation pond to all settlement of the suspended waste to avoid contaminating the drainage canal in the natural environment. The remaining pathogens in the ponds can be eliminated during the liming process. Liming. Once the pond is cleaned, it is then filled with water and left overnight before flushing out to remove debris and elevate the pH. This process should be repeated until the pH of the water remains above 7, and only then the lime is applied. The types of lime to be used depend on the water pH. It is recommended that agricultural lime calcium carbonate, CACO3, dot or dolomite magnesium carbonate, ideally CAMG, CO3, Two should be used in a pond with water pH near neutral and the hydrated lime calcium hydroxide is an inorganic compound with the chemical formula CaOH. Two should be used in a pond with water pH below 5. The amount of lime to be used should be carefully calculated to avoid inducing an excessively high water pH, which may increase ammonia toxicity and result in the mortality of the koi fish. Liming continued. The lime requirement of the pond depends on the soil pH. The measurement of the soil pH should be determined either by the wet soil method or by the dry soil method. During the application, lime should be spread throughout the pond bottom and up to the top of the dike. A large portion of lime should be applied over the feeding areas and to all parts of the pond that have remained wet. When the pond is properly limed and filled with water, the average water pH should be between 7.5 to 8.5 with daily fluctuation of less than 0.5. Agricultural lime, dolomite, or hydrated lime at 100 kg slash ha slash day should be added to maintain the required pH. Eradication of predators. After liming, the pond should be filled to the maximum depth through a screen with fine mesh to prevent the predators and competitors from entering the pond. These animals, including fish lynx snakehead zone hello and in local dialect, crustaceans, and some invertebrates, may compete for food, prey on the koi fry or carry diseases and parasites. They may establish themselves in the pond that is not effectively screened effectively or is left for a long period of time. Eradication of predators continued. Some chemicals should be used to eradicate these animals in the pond before stalking. Snails can be eliminated by the application of quicklime, chow, at 530 kg slash hot and sun dried for 2 to 3 days. Bleaching powder, 
bleaching powder or calcium hypochlorite, CaOCl2, is another practical and safe fish toxicant. It kills all the predatory and weed fish of the pond when applied at the rate of 25 to 30 ppm, Tripodi ETAL, 1980. However, during storage, significant chlorine content is lost and hence it is always safer to use the commercially available bleaching powder at the rate of 35 to 50 ppm or 350 to 500 kg slash ha slash m of water. Fish kill occurs within 1 to 3 hours and the toxicity lasts for 3 to 5 days. Eradication of predators continued. Plankton and benthic fauna start developing from the 7th or 8th day after treatment. Chlorine content of the bleaching powder thoroughly disinfects the pond which is essential in undrainable ponds where disinfection by sun drying is not at all possible. Disinfection of the pond is one of the essential measures for maintaining proper health condition of the fish. Besides, it also satisfies the lime requirement of the pond soil. The method of application is also relatively simple. The powder is mixed with water and uniformly spread over the entire water surface. Distressed and dead fish are removed by netting. Chlorine killed fish are safe for human consumption. Eradication of predators continued calculation of dose. The required quantity of poison can be calculated using the following formulae. For rectangular ponds. See formula below. Equals required amount of poison in kg. Eradication of predators continued calculation of dose. For circular ponds. See formula below. Equals required amount of poison in kg. Fertilization. The pond must be fertilized with either organic or inorganic fertilizer to stimulate the plankton bloom in order to provide shade to the pond bottom and utilize the nitrogenous and phosphate wastes within the pond. The shade will also prevent the growth of harmful benthic algae. The sun-dried chicken manure is the most common organic fertilizer to be used in the amount of 200-300 kg slash hot. The manure must be soaked in water for 24 hours before it is spread over the surface of the water. Fertilization continued. Inorganic fertilizers, such as urea, 46% N, and compound fertilizers like ammonium phosphate, 16,20,0, or those with NPK combination of 16 hours 16 minutes and 16 seconds, can be used at 20-30 kg slash hot. The fertilizer must be dissolved in water before it is spread over the water surface to avoid precipitation of the fertilizer onto the pond bottom which will enrich the soil and accelerate the growth of benthic algae. Fertilization continued. After fertilization, the plankton should bloom within a few days and the color of the water becomes slightly green. The fertilizer, either the organic or inorganic should be applied daily in the pond at 5 to 10 percent of the initial amount to maintain the plankton bloom. If the plankton has not bloomed within a few days, additional fertilizer must not be applied, but plankton-rich water or green water from the reservoir should be added.